Three-year-old Sarai is the picture of health. Just a few months before this, she was hospitalized with a collapsed lung, complications of pneumonia. In the beginning, I just thought it was just a common cold because it was just a fever. She stopped eating. She wasn't eating at all, and then she started vomiting. She started vomiting. After that, her temperature was going higher. The events that would follow took Sarai's family by surprise. She had a very serious pneumococcal pneumonia, and it was the type that got outside the lung to cause an infection in the space between the lung and the chest wall, and that's called a pleural empyema. That required surgical drainage. There is a pneumococcus vaccine now available, and pediatricians hope it will cut down on the number of pneumococcal infections they see in young children. One of the most common and concerning signs of infection is a fever. It's believed that the heat helps the body fight off infections, but fevers prompt concern. For many parents, especially new parents concerned about illnesses, the biggest question is usually, when should I call the doctor? As a new mom, you tend to worry about more details, and you're looking for guidance through every step. You don't just wing it, especially with a newborn. You want to know every detail to follow. Call your doctor if the child has a fever and is an infant three months or younger, refuses fluids or seems too ill to drink adequately, has signs of dehydration, has a seizure, is still feverish after 72 hours, or has any of the following symptoms. Inconsolable crying, continued irritability after fever is dropped, difficulty awakening, confusion or delirium, rash with fever, stiff neck, difficulty breathing, diarrhea or repeated vomiting. High fever causes rapid fluid loss and can quickly lead to dehydration, especially in younger children. Signs of dehydration include a lack of tearing in the eyes, a dryness inside the mouth, and less frequent urination. Nursing infants usually get enough water from regular feedings, but your doctor may suggest supplemental water. For older children, it may be time for an ice pop, extra water, soup, or gelatin. Avoid drinks containing caffeine, including colas and tea. These can act as diuretics and should be avoided. Check with your doctor before giving fever-reducing or cold medications, and pediatricians have a strong message about what not to give. Remember not to give anything containing aspirin to children with influenza-like illnesses because it's been shown that combination of influenza or chickenpox and aspirin may result in Rye syndrome, which is a very serious condition that causes brain swelling and inflammation of the liver and other organs in the body and can actually be fatal. So aspirin is not a good idea during the flu season. Avoiding aspirin should prompt close scrutiny of labels. You need to be on the lookout for aspirin containing medications. Some medications such as cold medicine, um, sinus medicine, and even um, other over-the-counter medications might contain aspirin. Although he's well right now, okay, good idea just to read over this pamphlet, okay, okay about, you know, overuse uh, of antibiotics. One of the most common reactions for a parent is to request an antibiotic for their child. What parents need to remember is that colds and illnesses caused by viruses do not respond to antibiotics.